guys and welcome back to another video here with me at the Aspiring Home Cook. Today we're making chana masala or curry chickpeas. Now this is one of my favorite dishes when I'm looking for a meatless option to include into my meal rotation. In today's recipe, I'm actually going to cook dried chickpeas and use them in the recipe. You also have the option of using canned chickpeas if you don't want to go through the process. But if you're interested, here's how I do it. You start off by washing and soaking dried chickpeas. I've got a cup's worth of chickpeas over here. You can buy these dried chickpeas by the kilo in most stores nowadays. Using water at room temperature, you're just going to rinse through those chickpeas to get rid of any impurities and drain the water out. You're going to repeat this process about two or three times till you're happy with how clean the chickpeas are. Now you're going to cover the chickpeas with water that's at room temperature. Make sure the chickpeas are covered by about a couple of inches. Place them in a large bowl so they have enough place to soak and swell up. And you're going to leave these chickpeas on a counter in your kitchen to soak for about six to eight hours. You can do this overnight as well. So wash and put your chickpeas to soak before going to bed. And in six to eight hours, this is what you'll find. They've almost doubled in size and they're soft enough to pierce through with your fingernail. So you're now going to drain the water and rinse this through once more in fresh water. Drain that water out as well. I'm now going to use a pressure cooker to cook my chickpeas because I find this is the most time and energy efficient way. But if you don't have a pressure cooker, you can also simply boil the chickpeas in a pot in sufficient water on the stovetop till they're tender. I add enough water to cover the chickpeas by a couple of inches. Add in about a teaspoon of salt and two to three whole Kashmiri chilies. This is just to add a little more flavor to the boiled chickpeas. I'm now going to put on the lid to my pressure cooker and, and cook till the chickpeas are tender. For me, it takes about five minutes once the pressure has built up in the cooker. Every cooker is different, so please follow your manufacturer's instructions for the best results. Now that your chickpeas are cooking, let's have a look at what else you'll need. You're going to need one onion, finely chopped, a couple of red or green chilies. You're just going to slit them lengthways, half a teaspoon ginger paste, one teaspoon garlic paste, a cup of tomato puree or passata. I'm using passata today and some fresh coriander, both leaves and stalk. This will be chopped finely as a garnish. Now you're going to need whole as well as powdered spices. Let's take a look at the whole spices first. I've got one bay leaf, a couple of pieces of cinnamon, one brown cardamom pod, two green cardamom pods, five to six cloves, about eight to 10 peppercorns, one teaspoon of cumin seeds. For the powdered spices, I'm using half a teaspoon of turmeric powder, one and a half teaspoon of mild Kashmiri chili powder, and one and a half teaspoon of garam masala powder. You're also going to need a tablespoon of cooking oil, salt to taste, and half to one teaspoon of sugar. Now my chickpeas have cooked, the pressure in the cooker has died down and it was safe to open it. Here's what the cooked chickpeas look like. You'll see some of them have kind of come out of their skins, but that's perfectly fine. And the peas are soft enough to smash between your fingers. We're now ready to start assembling the curry. Heat a large pan on some medium heat. Add a tablespoon of oil. When the oil has heated, start by adding in your whole spices. Once these whole spices have sort of released their aroma, just stir them around a little and tip in your cumin seeds. Stir that around and to prevent the cumin seeds from burning, you're quickly going to add in the next set of ingredients. Your split chilies and the chopped onion. You're now going to saute your onions until they've softened and the edges have started to get a little brown. You can then add in the ginger paste and the garlic paste. Stir that around well and cook this off for about another minute or so to cook off that ginger and garlic paste a little. Now add in your powdered spices, the turmeric powder, the red chili powder and the garam masala powder. Stir the spices through well so that it coats all of the onions and the rest of the ingredients in the pot. Add a couple of tablespoons of the reserved chickpea stock and stir that around. I do that a couple of times to prevent the spices from burning 
as well as to deglaze the pan and get all the flavors off of it. This gets your masala started. You can now add in the tomato puree or passata and stir that through well. You're now going to let this cook off for a couple of minutes, stirring every once in a while and you're just going to let those flavors mingle. Now I add a little stock or water to the container that the tomato puree was in and swirl that around just to get all of the puree from there and add that to the pan. Stir this around and let this cook off for about another minute or two. You are now ready to add the stock or the liquid component to the pot. I just use the liquid that the chickpeas were cooked in and I add them a couple of ladles at a time just to bring the curry to the desired consistency and let it cook off. Remember that your curry will thicken as it cooks off so add the stock according to what you want your curry to look like. Stir that through and let the curry come to a boil. You can then cover the pot, reduce the heat to a simmer or low and let this cook off for about 5 minutes. After 5 minutes, carefully open the pot, give it a good stir and check for seasoning. At this stage, you can add more salt if needed, add more stock if you need to and add the sugar. You'll need between half to one teaspoon or thereabouts of sugar just to balance the flavors in the curry. Depending on how tart the tomatoes you've used are, you'll have to adjust your sugar level accordingly. Put the lid back on and let this cook off for another five minutes or so. After that, lastly, you're going to add in your boiled chickpeas. Gently stir that around and you're going to let the curry cook off for another minute or two till the chickpeas have heated through all over again. You can now take the curry off the heat and add the chopped coriander to garnish. Make sure you add this at the very end after you've taken the curry off the heat. And you're ready to serve. Serve your chana masala or your curry chickpeas piping hot. You can serve this with steamed rice. You can serve this with some chapatis or rotis. These chickpeas go excellently with some puris or madures. I have shared a recipe for puris before and I'm going to share the link to that recipe with you right here. One last flourish of chopped coriander just to top everything off and your chickpeas are ready to be served up. So you see, cooking Indian food is actually a lot easier than it may seem at times. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel below. Once you've subscribed, click on that little bell icon right next to it so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. Also, if you have family and friends that you think will enjoy a recipe like this, please go ahead and share this video with them. As always, I'll have a link to the complete recipe down in the description box below. Thank you so much for joining me and watching today, guys, and I'm going to see you really soon with another delicious recipe. So till then, take care. Bye.